Hi all, thanks very much for watching this presentation and for attending this conference. I'm Mega and I work as a quantitative researcher at the American Institutes for Research. And I'll be presenting on my package WildMeta, which implements cluster wild bootstrapping for meta-analysis. This package is co-authored with my advisor, James Pasiewski. And we also have a wild hex logo designed by my talented friend, Raz. And the package provides functions to handle dependent effect sizes and meta-analysis. Typical meta-analytic techniques like meta-regression involves the assumption that effect sizes are independent. However, in social science and education research, it's common for each primary study to yield more than one effect size or for studies to be nested in some way, creating dependence. For example, Tanner Smith and Lipsy 2015 uh, is a meta-analysis examining the effects of brief alcohol interventions. The meta-analysis consisted of 185 studies and in those studies, uh, 1,446 effect sizes. The meta-analysis included primary studies which had multiple correlated outcome measures. For example, the alcohol consumption outcome was measured by frequency of consumption, quantity consumed, and blood alcohol con concentration. The studies also included repeat repeated measures of the outcome and multiple comparison groups, creating sort of correlated data structure, correlated effects data structure. There are several ways to handle dependence. One is to ignore dependence, but doing so can result in incorrect standard errors and incorrect inferences from hypothesis tests. Some ad hoc methods include selecting one effect size randomly per study or analyzing subsets of data separately. However, such methods result in loss of information. The ideal way to handle dependence is to use multivariate models, but to do so it requires information on covariance or correlations between effect sizes, which are really hard to obtain from information provided in primary studies. Hedges, Tipton, and Johnson, 2010, uh, introduced another method called robust variance estimation, RVE, which doesn't require the knowledge of correlations between effect sizes, but uses sandwich estimators to estimate the variance. However, studies have shown that RVE only works well when the number of studies is large. Hedges, Tipton, and Johnson, 2010, suggested over 40, 40 studies are need, needed. And Tipton, 2015, also showed that the, the performance of RVE also depends on the characteristics of the design matrix. Meta-analysis in social science research, however, typically have smaller number of studies. Um, over half of them have less than 40 studies. Uh, and when there are small number of studies, RV, using RBE results in type one error inflation. And therefore meta analysts can conclude that some effect is present when, the, when it is actually not present. Tipton 2015 and Tipton Pusiewski 2015 examined several small sample corrections for a single coefficient test and for multiple contrast hypothesis tests. And both recommended a method called HTZ test, which is a CR2 correction for RBE. Uh, plus saturated degrees of freedom, an extension of that for multiple contrast hypothesis tests. HCs, HC, the HCs test was shown to control type one error rates adequately, but it may have it may possibly have low power, especially for multiple contrast hypothesis tests. In my dissertation, um, I examined an alternative method called cluster wild bootstrapping, which has been studied in the econometrics literature, but not in the meta analytic framework. General bootstrapping is used to estimate unknown quantities by resampling many times from the original data. And cluster wild bootstrapping involves resampling residuals by multiplying them by cluster level, cluster, level, cluster level random weights. This is the algorithm for cluster wild bootstrapping. First, we fit a null model and a full model on the original data. The full model consists of all the variables of interest in the meta-regression model. And the null model consists of variables except for the ones being tested in single coefficient tests or multiple contrast hypothesis tests. We obtain residuals from the null model and then we generate an auxiliary random variable and multiply the residuals by the random variable, which is said to be constant within clusters. We can also uh, uh, multiply the residuals by CR2 matrices before multiplying by the weights. We then obtain the new outcome scores by adding the transform residuals to the predicted values from the null model fit on the original data. We re-estimate re the full model with the new calculated outcome scores and obtain the test statistic. 
and we repeat three to uh, steps three to five for R times, which is the number of bootstrap replications. And we calculate the p-value as the proportion of, of uh, bootstrap test statistics that were greater than the original test statistic. In my dissertation, um, I ran two massive simulations to compare the cholesterol bootstrapping test against the HTZ test. And I found that the cholesterol bootstrapping test maintained type 1 error rates adequately and provided huge gains in power than the HTZ test, especially for multiple contrast uh, hypothesis tests. Dependent effect sizes are common in meta-analysis and social sciences. If we use the original RVE as suggested by Hedges, Tipton, and Johnson, it can lead to type 1 error inflation, meaning high false discovery rate. If we use the HDD test recommended by Tipton and Tipton Dostoevsky 2015, it may result in low power, especially when you're doing multiple contrast hypothesis tests, which means that it may, may, we may miss effects that are present. So we recommend the use of cluster web bootstrapping test, which balances type 1 error rates and also provides more power than existing um, small sample corrections. So cluster wild bootstrapping algorithm is implemented in our package wild meta. The main function of the package is called wild test CWB. And the function works with meta regression models fit using the Ruby function from the Ruby meta package and the RMA MV function from the metaphor package. And these are the arguments required for the function. The full model is the meta-regression model using Ruby or RMAMB with all the variables of interest. The constraints are like the contrast to be tested. R is the number of bootstrap replications that you want to run. And we recommend a high number like 1,999 or higher, or like higher bootstrap being replications will result in higher power. Um, for the rest of the arguments, you can please read our doc documentation online. This is the example data that I'll be using to show the functions of WildMeta. It's called SAT Coaching and it's available in Club Sandwich package. It is a meta analytic data setting the effect of SAT Coaching on verbal and math SAT scores. It contains the study type variable, which indicates whether groups were matched, non equivalent, or randomized, the hours of coaching done, and the type of test, verbal or math. It also contains the effect size and the variance associated with the effect size. And it is, as you can note, like each one study can have multiple effect sizes because they have multiple outcome measures, correlated outcome measures. So there's a correlated, correlated effects dependent structure. This is the Roby Meta model. I'm running a model with zero intercept, the study type variable, the hours, and the test variable and running a correlated effects model using review from Ruby Meta. And this is the, this is the result from the Ruby model. So these three coefficients uh, are the average effect for each study type, controlling for hours and the test type. And for multiple contrast hypothesis tests, I want to study whether the effect of coaching differs based on study type, whether it's the same for matched, non-equivalent, randomized, or, or, if it's, or if it's different. To run the multiple contrast hypothesis test to examine whether treatment effects differ by study type, I'm using the wall test CWB function from WildMeta. I input the Ruby model. I use the constraint equal function from the club sandwich package to create a constraint matrix, um, setting the first three coefficients equal to each other. I use uh, 989 bootstrap replications and I set a seed. And this is the result that we get. We get the p value from cost real bootstrapping. And if it's greater than 0 0.5, for example, if, the, if your nominal alpha is 0 0.5, uh, you can conclude that there's no statistically significant difference in the effects of this SAT coaching um, across the three different study types. You also get information on what test you ran, any adjustment that you use, and the uh, CR corrections and statistics used to conduct the wall test. And here I'm fitting the same model, but using metaphor, RMAMB function. Um, I'm, 
I'm estimating a multi-level meta-analysis model with study type nested within study using RMIMV. And it, the wall test CWB works the same way. The inputs are very similar and you get the p-value for the metaphor model. We also have a function called plot in wild meta, which plots the bootstrap distribution, bootstrap test statistics distribution. So these are the F statistics from each of the bootstrap applications. Um, and this the dash line indicates the original F statistics from the original model. And the proportion of F statistics, bootstrap F statistics that are greater than the original F statistic is the p-value from the for cluster web bootstrapping. Thank you very much again for listening to this presentation. We have a website for this package, which has instructions on how to down download the package from CRAN, please download, and, or from GitHub. And it has examples on how to use the package with the Ruby models and um, RMA MV models. We have documentation on the functions and what all the arguments are. And we also have a vignette, vignette detailing what cluster wild bootstrapping is and how to use it with Ruby meta models and metaphor models. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know.